Hello, statistics students. Welcome to an updated version of statistics for beginners using SPSS. My goal is to get you familiar with the SPSS, not simply how to run a particular test, but how to get really good at using the software. This video is a clear introduction to SPSS. With this video, you will become comfortable with the basic of handling data in SPSS. We are going to start with the basic where I teach you SPSS workspace, how to create variables, and how to enter data. From there, we will move on to simple statistics and common statistical tests. If you are ready, let's get started with SPSS for beginners. Start by opening the SPSS software on your computer. It I will be going to use SPSS version 29. If you haven't gotten to the latest versions of SPSS, you might have to contact JTMK at 0 at 329000 for SPSS installation. Let's get started with the basic. There are two view modes to SPSS. There is data view and variable view. Data view, which we are in right now, is basically just a spreadsheet, and this is where you enter number. Each row represents one participant, or subject, or case, and each column is dedicated to a single variable or type of measurement. Right now, all of the cells are grey. Let's just try copying in some number. I'll do 1, 2, you will see that as you enter a number into a column, that column comes into life. The variables automatically get named, and its properties are set by default. However, the name is VAR00001, that stands for variable number 1. If you type in more numbers, more variables get defined. The default name will be VAR0002, 003, 004. And this can get a little bit confusing, especially if you have lots of variables and they are all named almost exactly the same thing. And also the default properties for each properties may not be exactly what you want. So we should learn how to change them. And we are going to do that in variable view. To get to the variable view, click on this tab at the bottom of the screen. We can now see our four variables. In variable view, each variable is in a row and the properties are in column. We will begin by changing our variable names. There are a few things that you need to know about naming variables in SPSS. First of all, you can name a variable pretty much anything that you want, but you cannot use spaces. You cannot use more special characters and the name cannot begin with a number. If you want to use a space, use underscore. Camel case works equally well where you omit the spaces, but you capitalize each new word. So let's settle on some more descriptive names. The first variable is going to be a random identification number that we call as ID. Next, we will have a variable for gender and then a variable for height and one more for weight. Now variable names are good, but sometimes you want something even more descriptive and in that case add a label. Labels allow you to describe your variables with much more detail. For example, ID is a random identification number and this height in cm and weight in kg. Another important property is type. The default types is numeric because we are using numbers, but you can change the type to debts if you are recording debts or to currency amount. A string variable includes letters or words in the data, but honestly, for most of what we are going to be doing analyzing data, the numeric variables is going to be exactly what you want. Probably, the only other property right now is measure. Measure specifies the scale of measurement that you will be using. Any statistic textbook will tell you that there are four scales of measurement, including nominal, 
ordinal, interval, and ratio. So in SPSS, measure nominal is called nominal, ordinal is called ordinal, but interval and ratio are both called scale. Both of these variables are nominal, so we will leave these two set to scale. I will quickly mention some other properties. Width specifies how wide or narrow the string variables entries can be. We won't be using string variables, so we can safely ignore that. Decimal specifies how many decimal places will be shown. Two decimals is the default, but we can increase or decrease them. The nominal variables don't need decimal because they are whole numbers. Scale var variables we can leave set to two decimals. Column specifies how wide or narrow the columns will appear in the data view. Change the column value to 25 and the column becomes wider. You can also adjust the width of the column by hand in data view and you will see those changes reflected back in variable view. A line helps you to set the data to be left justified, right justified or centered. For me, I'd like to leave all the numeric variable right justified. There are some properties like values, missing and role which are useful once you have learned the basic. So here is what you need to know. You can create a new variable simply by typing a new name. It is that easy. Give it a label, adjust the decimal and set the measure. Leave all of other settings at the default. And if you want to de delete a variable, select it and then choose clear. So now you know some basics of SPSS, how to create a variable and adjust its setting. Next, we are going to begin plugging in numbers and running some simple analysis. We are going to begin in data view. Here in data view, these are the same four variables that we created in the video. So now we can add some numbers. And you can pause the video and enter the same numbers into your SPSS spreadsheet. Now that we have numbers, it is important to understand just what this data represents. The first column is a random identification number. It stands in for the names of participants and keeps our data anonymous. The second variable is gender. In these last two columns, represent the height and the weight for each participant. Even after you have named a variable, it is possible to change the variable names. Double click on a variable name to change it. When you do, you will be taken to variable view, which is where you actually will make the changes. We set the measure for each variable previously. The ID variable is nominal because it stands for a number. It stands in for a participant's name. The variable gender is also nominal and we are going to call gender as 1 and 2 for male and female. When a categorical variable has only two categories, we call it dichotomous. So the 1 and 2 are categories. You can be in one category or the other one. You can't be in both. You can't be in neither. Last, these last two columns represent height and weight. Height and weight are both quantitative variables and not categorical. They are measuring something. They both have fixed interval between the scores and they both have a meaningful zero. Both height and weight are set to scale because they are both ratio level. Before we begin analyzing this number, there is one thing that we should do. For a variable like gender, where we didn't cut the 1 and 2, we don't want to get confused with who was male and who was female, what number stood for what, as we are going to assign value labels for each level of these categorical variables. Then you have to click on values, and this uh, is the process to tell SPSS to represent all of the one as male and two as female. So now you can click OK. So in data view, you can see the numbers, but watch this. You, you see this button, click it and you can toggle between numbers and value labels. Let's leave this set with the value labels on. It's just easier that way. So now, I think it is time for us to analyze the data. We are going to use the analyze menu. We, from there, we saw a lot of options. The one that we want is analyze. 
descriptive statistic and frequency. This window will usually pop up and you will see lots of windows of this type in SPSS. All of the variables that we have in our data set on the left and the variables that we want to analyze go on the right. You can select a variable for analysis by, by clicking on its name and clicking on the arrow between the boxes. Now you can click OK. You can find the mean, standard deviations, variance of the data by clicking on statistic and you click on the data that you, you will need for your data interpretation. So other than that, you can also select a chart and you can have bar chart in your output later on. What we are seeing now is the output window. SPSS usually provide huge amount of output and you need education to interpret the output. So, good luck! That's it for me. Thank you for listening and good luck everyone.